I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and I am here as part of our Meet the Experts television animation panel with Jane Wu from the Netflix original animated show Blue Eye Samurai. Uh, first question I wanted to ask you is, um, what were some of the inspirations behind the look of the series and its characters? Because it's so distinctive, and it, it's it, it really takes it really takes you away with how with with the details of it. Uh, by the way, thank you for having me here. Very happy to talk about the show and and uh, chat with you. Uh, yes, Blue Eye Samurai was um, was a huge undertaking in that it's adult animation and really nothing has been done like this before. Um, I knew that if I did anime style, I would be dead in the water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mostly because there has been great samurai anime shows out there already. I wasn't going to do any better. So I knew I had to create a lane for this show and for ourselves to kind of exist. And so what I did was I just kind of looked back into my childhood of some of the things that really affected me visually in this culture. And one of them is Bunraku puppets. These puppets are about three feet tall. They're about a, close to a hundred pounds. Um, and they're operated by three, two to three uh, puppeteers. And these puppets are, they don't tell kid stories. They tell very, very adult stories. Back in the day when, you know, you didn't have television, this this is like a 200, uh, 200 year old art form. So back in the day when you didn't really have any type of way, you know, no movie theaters, no radio or anything like that, they would do no stages or bunraku puppets to kind of tell stories for the general audience. And I just remember how beautiful they were and how haunting they were in, in terms of their stylized movements. So a lot of the characters' visual look um, came from that 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 proportion and some of the uh, motion in, in the way we designed their animation is designed after how the puppets move and, and their stylization and moving because we we don't want to get too real into the unc uncanny valley right into how we depict these more grounded characters but Bunraku seems to have this very beautifully stylized movement that that they were able to create with the puppets when they animated. Um, the other thing we did was um, line quality is very important because it's animation. So we tested so many lines to see what would work. Um, and in the end, one of my favorite anime uh, movies of all time is Tikan King Crete. And I kept going back to study that for many reasons. And one of it was for a lot of the line quality that they had, because I also wanted to harken back to the old 60s uh, Disney animation, you know, the Xerox lines, the old Xerox lines, um, because our characters are CG, uh, but we did a tune shading flat surface to them so it would mimic a 2D feel of it. So I wanted the line quality to mimic a pencil line so that it still retains its animation, you know, magic, if you will. Um, uh, in addition to that animation, uh, the voice cast is uh, is uh, absolutely excellent. Um, and I, I, what I was wondering is, uh, were there any characters for whom it was challenging to cast the right performer for? No, because um, when Michael and Amber uh, wrote these, I think they, they wrote them with such specificity in the characters that we already knew who to go out to, you know? And thank goodness for us, um, I would say just about everybody accepted our 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 script when we went out to them. And of course, you know, my my career goal bucket list was to work with George Takai, and I was just so thrilled to be able to work with a legend like that. That's weird. I think that's I think that's on my bucket list too. <laughs> well, he's 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 as awesome as as he portrays himself to be. Uh, that makes me very happy to hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you were actually going into a bit about uh, the uh, 
about the the look of the show and the anime and but i was w wondering on a more technical level about the animation that's used in the program because you said like if there's the characters are cg but there's a, an animated layer on that and um it's it's not an animated layer it's a it's a 2d kind of like tune shading so <laughs> we um I decided that I wanted to go with a, a European company to do the animation because I didn't want this to be anime. The subject itself was already Eastern and I want, you know, the whole entire show was based off of Mizu's character of being biracial, right? So the whole idea that she's mixed race, I, I just literally took that philosophy and ran with it. I have eight years uh, logged in in animation and I have about 10, 12 years logged in live action. So I took both of these elements and meshed together in, in hopefully in a seamless way that the live action aspect was also being able to mesh into the animation aspect of it. So um, in order to achieve some of that camera work, we, we had, you had to do some CG in it. So our production is two and a half D and um, we actually were animating on a antiquated 20 year old game engine software called 3D Studio Max. So uh, that was kind of a challenge, but we figured it out. Um, and so the characters are all CG and everything else is a projection map and projection. Um, it's, it's almost like an old school um, layer camera system that Disney used to do. So basically when you move the camera, you only have about 30% of play before you kind of break your parallax and so forth. So in a way it's, it's done very, very traditionally. It's just the philosophy of what we're doing in terms of making sure that we lens up and have a lens progression for every single shot was something that I introduced into this pipeline that I, I haven't seen before, um, especially in, in TV animation. So, you know, further about the animation, um, I'm, I was curious about what proved to be the most challenging scene to animate for uh, the for, for this uh, first season of the show. Uh, certainly, it's all the action sequences um, because the action sequences are so grounded and so intense, and the camera is like spinning all over the place. Um, because one one of the things I wanted to do was to keep the camera not moving when we were doing those dramatic dialogue scene because it also harkens back to the culture in. In, in the stillness and the silence of it all um, and the um, and kind of like showing strength in um, in in the stillness and so when it came time for the an um, for the action part it was almost like that that sequence where um, Mizu un unhinged her or unbuckled her weights and you just went and the cameras just go crazy. That way you could feel the power of, of the action sequences, right? So that definitely was very complicated to do because th those are all real martial arts movement that the stunt team shot out and choreographed. And so the animators had to go and, you know, do your eyeball rotoscope thing and make sure that the that the action aspect of it was also animated to to the movements as, as as authentic as possible. And are those are, are those challenging scenes like those fight scenes? Um, uh, are they also at the same time? Are they also enjoyable uh, 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 to animate and put together? I don't animate them myself. I I assume it's not fun because it's very hard. But I think they um, I think our overseas studio uh, Blue Spirit did such a fantastic job, and they rose up to the challenge every time. We just kept pushing and kept pushing. Um, me, myself, I, I love action. So anytime an action scene comes in, that really elevates the story and the character and, and what happens. It's just, it, it just makes me want to jump up and yell, you know? So there was a lot of jumping up and yelling <laughs> in our, in our work days. <laughs> well, um, uh, uh, Jane, uh, we thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on our panel in just a little bit. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me.